Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and today we are flipping through my reading journal from 2023. Ta-da! Here it is, my reading journal from the year. I feel like you've seen this journal a lot. Um, I've shown a couple of videos about how I fill in my journal and a little bit more extent in some vlogs, but I'm excited to do a full on flip through and chat through some of my spreads with you. So just so you know, this is a Loish Term 1917 A5 dotted journal in yellow. If you couldn't tell, the most bright canary yellow you will ever imagine. I also have a Heartstopper sticker on the front and it's um, so poor and faded, my poor Heartstopper sticker of Nick and Charlie. And then I also have this book stack picture, I mean sticker that I really like. Okay, flipping in to the journal, just the front page, says Becca, nice and simple. I saw somebody put a bunch of book stickers on the inside cover of their reading journal and I like that. Like they got a bunch of book stickers throughout the year and just just put them in here. It's a nice way to kind of like scrapbook and remember some of their stickers and when and where they got them. So maybe I'll do that in the future, but for now I just have a plain blank page. I have my index of where I can find all of these spreads, but my journal tends to follow a pretty good formula or like pattern. And so I don't often turn to this. However, I do note some of the readathons I took play took part in, and so I feel like I might come back to that in the future. Okay, cover page for 2023, nice and simple. <laughs> I feel like the theme of this journal is functionality, and how can I get that in the simplest way? <laughs> so here we have just a simple table of all of the books I read. I number them one through however many. Currently I'm at 139 books, but I think by the end of the month, I end of the month and end of the year, I might get to 141. So we'll see as we get closer to the end of the month slash year. Like I said, the number of the book, the title of it, the rating I gave it, one through five, and also the dates that I read the book. Mostly I like to just see when I finished the book. So I have four pages of this, two full spreads of this, and that was just enough for me. I actually, if I read 141 books, they will not fit on here because there was 70 books per page, or 70 books per spread, I should say, 35 books per page. So we'll see if I have to just add another little line down here at the bottom. All right, next up we have my 2023 reading and review, which is basically a stats page. This top bar here tracks the number of books I read in each month. Again, December isn't filled out, but I think it will probably be 13 here. So pretty good reading month in December. Then I put a tick mark by every category that the book that I just finished fits into. So for format, I put a tick if it was a physical ebook or audiobook, or I put a tick here if it was a combination of those three. I do a ratings tracker here, or stats, what have you, and I mark if it was five stars, four stars, three, all the way down to DNF. You can see I had four DNFs this year. That's pretty good. I wanted to DNF more, which I felt like... <laughs> That is more than previous years, believe it or not. Uh, I kept track of some author stats. So if they were female, male, non-binary, if they were a person of color or and or if they were not American, not from the United States, I should say. Uh, also, I just put a mark here if there was LGBTQIA plus representation. Then we have the genre. I just put a tick for the genre that each book fits into. We've got age demographic for adult, young adult, middle grade, or new adult, and then the year that the book was published. This is fun. It's just fun to fill out throughout the year as I finish books and see where most of my reading is done or how most of my reading is done. This is the monthly reading review for the year. I just like to see all in one place how many total books I read in each month? How many pages I read in each month? Did I finish my TBR? How many books were fiction? How many were nonfiction? And how many new favorites I had or how many five stars I had basically in each month? So this is just a great overview of every single month of reading. 
Here's my Goodreads challenge. I um, just made little boxes for each book and I filled in the box with a color and each color corresponded to a genre. So it's fun to see my genres. Definitely my most read genres are contemporary, historical, and romance, I would say. Yeah, that feels right. Um, my original goal for 2023 was 100 books, but I surpassed that, obviously by like 39 to 41 books. <laughs> so that was great. Flipping on over, we have my buzzword reading challenge for 2023. Kayla from Books and Lala puts this on. She's done it for the last three-ish years, I think, and I'm excited to participate in 2024. In this one, she just gives you a prompt for each month, and that prompt has to fit into the title of a book somehow. So for example, in January, you needed to either have life or death in the title. And so I read The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. But then there are um, some more broad ones, like in February, you just needed a verb. And so I chose Climb from The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. This is always just a fun one to try to fit books into various buzzwords. And it's always good to try to pick books from your physical shelves. That's what I try to do, at least. Okay. Then we've got the A to Z challenge, which is just reading a book that starts with every letter of the alphabet. This one I don't really like try to do. It just so happens that most of my books fit into every single letter of the alphabet, which is nice. I had to work hard on the Z, basically. Yeah. I think that was it. So that was fun. Then we've got my read to zero challenge. This one's hard to see because I used a very light gray, but I just wanted to see if I could get my unread owned books down from the start of the year, which was 240. Um, as you can see, at the end of January, I was only up by one book and then I was down. Then I stayed kind of right around 240. Then I got down all the way to two, ooh, all the way to 220. And then in October, we jumped up to 244, 250. And if you saw my entire unread TBR video, I'll link it up above. I think my final number for December is 262. So I'm definitely too big here. Oh, but actually that includes borrowed books, which I don't think I included on this page. But anyway, I have around 250 to 260 books that I haven't read and the goal was just to get it down from 240. Obviously, I didn't do that. So, it can always be a goal for next year. <laughs> book of the Month is an app and book subscription service. And on the app, they put out a challenge to their subscribers, their readers. Uh, this year, it happened to be read 15 Book of the Months, read three debut darlings, which just meant three debuts, and read one page pusher, which needed to be a book over 400 pages. I was able to complete this challenge. I actually read 17 Book of the Months. I always pluralize month instead of book, so it really should be Books of the Month, but I call them book of the months. And I actually read more three, more than three debut darlings and more than one page pressure, but I just stopped recording them here. So this is a fun one. I plan to take part in this again next year. These books will self-destruct spread. I just listed the 12 books that I had created a video for. These are books that have been on my shelves for far too long and it was embarrassing that I hadn't read them yet. Uh, as you can see, I either read or DNF'd 11 of the 12 and catch 22 I will just have to unhaul. Here's a series tracker. Uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. I put the title of a series, I put a certain amount of boxes for how many books are in that series, and then I color them in if I've read them or not. I also color in this far left hand column if I've completed the series. I have a star here. This means that these are the series I started this year. So that's kind of fun to keep track of. I have a series tracker in my like Google spreadsheets also, but this is just a good way to see it physically on a page. So I like having this. As you can see, I finished five series this year. Good for me. Now we're jumping in to the monthly dashboards. I create kind of this dashboard every single month where I have the 
month over here. At the end of the month, I put how many books I read and how many pages I read that month. And then over here, I've got a table for my deck of TBR books, which is the TBR game I play to choose my books for each month. And then I put a list of the books I read with the name of the book and the author. And then down here, I put a table with a number corresponding to these numbers. I know, this is confusing, but it just works in my brain. And all of these numbers correspond to a book up here, and I put stats for that book in this table. So let's just look a little bit closer here. Oh, whoa, we're getting up close and personal. So I'll zoom in. Here you've got my deck of TBR table. I put the number of books, so I had six in January. I put the card that I pulled, and then each card corresponds to a prompt. I write the prompt that that card corresponded to, and then I write the book that I picked for that prompt. I also put a little check mark over here if I read them. So in January, I completed my TBR. Way to go me. Here is the list of books that I read. I read 11 books. I write the title and the author. Pretty simple. And then if we look, my first book of the year was My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry. Oh, Focus by Frederick Bachman. And so if we look at number one down here in this table, we can see that that book was published in 2013. I read it both physically and audibly. It had 370 pages. The audio time was 11 hours and two minutes. It was a contemporary book. It took me nine days to complete. I gave it a four star and how I discovered this book was because of the author, because I love Frederick Bachman. And that just goes on for every book that I read in the month. So uh, now we're just going to go through some reviews. I'll just name the books so that you know if you can't tell by the titles. So we've got My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman. We've got Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Ghost by Jason Reynolds, Someday Maybe by Onyi Nwabanelli. I should also say, you see all this colored text. Those are quotes from the book that I wanted to make note of. So I had quotes from basically all of these books. Um, some books I don't have any quotes, and that's great. Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Doerr. Spy Family volume what is this volume three wow i'm already on to volume nine now good job me i'll show myself out by jesse klein lunar love by lauren kung jessen and then at the end of each month i just put kind of a stats and goals wrap up so um these are just like some numbers i read 11 books read this many pages listened to this many hours kind of. <laughs> That's just however many hours of the audiobook there were. I read it at like two or three times the speed, so I don't actually spend that much time listening to books. Don't worry. I put my average rating for the month, and then I also put um, a percentage of how many books I read that were by BIPOC authors and how many books had queer rep. Then these are my bookish goals for the year, one through ten, um, and I just kind of give a status update of how I'm doing. So my number one goal for 2023 was to read 100 books and I read 11 books in January. So I was at 11 out of 100, which was 11%. Uh, and I just did that for all of my goals for 2023 in each of these monthly stats and goals updates. All right, moving on to February. I'm going to kind of just breathe, breeze through these now because you get the drill. They really don't change. The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman, A Thousand Mornings by Mary Oliver, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, Finding Me by Viola Davis, Nimona by, who's this by? Noelle Stevenson, I believe, I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetis, Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood, Woman of Light by Callie Fajardo and Steen, As Long As the Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. If you didn't watch my best book of 2023 video from yesterday, this is a hint. Uh, Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez and Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. And again, here are the stats and goals updates. March, I read 20 books. I also participated in Middle Grade March, which is a fun readathon where you read middle grade books. It's hosted by Krista from Books and Jams. Amanda from On the Middle Shelf and Katie. 
I can't think of Katie's channel name. So sorry, Katie. Life between words. I knew I'd get it. Uh, anyway, I had to put my list of books and the stats table on a separate page because I read 20 books in March. All right, we've got Otter by Katherine Applegate, Fatina by Jason Reynolds, When the Stars Were Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed, Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson, Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga, or a Story by Jasmine Warga, Spy Family Volume 4, I think, by Tatsuya Endo, Two Night Owl from Dogfish by Holly Goldberg, Sloan, and Meg Wolitzer. The War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. Uh, this was Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Land of Stories. The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer. Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. The Reason I Jump by Naoki Higashida. Spy Family Volume 5 by Tatsuya Endo, Mockingbird by Katherine Erskine, Chains by Lori House Anderson, The Shape of Thunder by Jasmine Warga, and Forge by Lori House Anderson. And my stats. We're into April. The books I read in April were The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, Infinite Country by Patricia Ingle, The Swiss Family Robinson by Johan something vice. I can't remember, friends. Fast Feast Repeat by Jen Stevens. Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukovka. Spare by Prince Henry. Esperanza Rising by Pan Munoz Ryan. Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Casimano. And The Hurting Kind by Ada Limon. Stats and goals. And we're on to May. I read a bunch in May because I took part in a couple of readathons. Escape the Readathon, which is hosted by Lexi from Books with Lexi, and the 72 Hours in the Smut Den, which has various hosts. So it was the reason that I read so many books. Yeah, because I participated in these readathons. Anyway, the books I read. This is What Happy Looks Like by Jennifer E. Smith, Under One Roof by Allie Hazelwood, Keeper of the Lost Cities, Book Two, Exile by Shannon Messenger, the Testaments by Margaret Atwood, Verity by Colleen Hoover, Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery, Stuck With You by Ali Hazelwood, The Push by Ashley Audrain, Sparks Like Stars by Nadia Hashimi, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, Sunny by Jason Reynolds, It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover, Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, Below Zero by Ali Hazelwood, Honey and Spice by Bolu Babalola, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren, and Happy Place by Emily Henry. Stats and goals for May, and we are on to June. The books I read in June were Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, The Good Sister by Sally Hepworth, Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, The Day the World Came to Town by Jim DeFeedy, The Oceanography of the Moon by Glendy Vandera, Mr. Churchill's Secretary by Susan Elia McNeil, Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman and Reversing Me Home by Eleanor Shearer. On to July. This is my worst reading month. Only seven books. Um, and I even took part in Ketchup-a-thon, but I did really poorly in Ketchup-a-thon, which is a readathon based on reading your book of the month books. Anyway, I, wow, I put a DNF in here. I should have done this more throughout the, the other months because I just didn't put when I DNF'd a book anywhere. So I DNF'd The Little Land by Jim Bilheri. Then I read Papisho by Leona Ross, Inherit The Inheritance of Orcadia Divina by Zorita Cordova, Hello Stranger by Catherine Center, The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer, June Reimagined by Rebecca Crane, Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong, and One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. Moving on to August, I realized as I was filming my Best Book of 2023 book bracket video, I didn't fill this in. So here it should say 11 books, and I did I have it up here? Did I? Did I? Yeah, it should say 11 books and 3,862 pages, but I'm going to have to get the right Tombow out for that, so 
Who knows if it'll ever get completed. <laughs> I reread volumes one through four of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Peace Like a River by Leif Anger. The Bridges of Madison County by Robert James Waller. A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. The River We Remember by William K. Kruger. And Kaikeyi by Vishnavi Patel. Of course, my stats and goals, and now we're on to September. I read 11 books, 3,800 pages-ish, and I participated in two readathons, loosely. I fully participated in Seasonathon Academy, hosted by Completely Melanie, and I kind of participated in Series September, hosted by Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, and Krista from Books and Jams, and Sarah. I'm Sarah's Nightstand. Is that right? I'm so sorry, people. <laughs> it's late and I'm forgetting things. Um, but it was fun to have this bingo board and this table tracking these reads. So I read Spy Family Volume 6 by Tatsuya Endo, St. Maisie by Jamie Attenberg, Spy Family Volume 7 by Tatsuya Endo, The Heart Principle by Helen Huang, Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, Love and Color by Bolu Babalola, Lou by Jason Reynolds, The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Bramer, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagahara. Oof, why didn't that make it to five stars? I do not know. And The Things We Do for Love by Kristen Hanna. I truncated this stats and goals page to just fit on one page so that we could move on to October. Ooh, this was Becca's Spookopolathon, which is a really fun take on her bookopolathon, readathon, and uh, so I did participate, and I think I read all the books for it, at least that I rolled. So I read Where the Forest Meets the Stars by Glendy Vandera, The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin, The Right Three by Blue Balliot, The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling, Black Widows by Kate Quinn, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, The Help by Catherine Stockett, and House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. Can you see this? Barf. It says barf <laughs> because that book. I completely forgot I read that book. Wow. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Here we're at November and I forgot to put these pages and books here. Let's just see again if it's on here. Definitely is 11 books and 3,977 pages. Should go right here. That's okay. It'll be a future Becca problem. I participated in Phase Out Your TBR hosted by Chris from Chris's Corner. I believe that's their channel name. Super fun. I am excited to participate in more of the phases that they put out. And the books I read were The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana, Tom Lake by Ann Patchett, Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover, If You Believe by Kristen Hanna, Toddlers Are A-Holes, <laughs> by uh, Budmi Laditan, Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, The Goldfinch by Donna Tart, The Kiss Curse by Aaron Sterling, In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros, A Trick of the Light by Louise Penny, and Going Zero by Anthony McCartan. Woohoo! Here we are getting to December, and as you can tell, I don't have this filled out either, but that's because it's still December 27th when I'm recording this. So there will be more books to add, hopefully. I'm hoping to finish two more books before the end of the month slash year. Uh, currently, I have 11 pages, or 11 books read, but I hope to have 13. We'll see. We will see. I co-hosted Merry Book Miss this month with Melanie from Completely Melanie and Laura Nettles. So this was my read for those books that fulfilled these prompts. And the books I've read so far in December are Seven Days in June by Tia Williams, The Chilberry Ladies Choir by Jennifer Ryan, Wayward by Amelia Hart, The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White, Evil Eye by Etoff Room, The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrienne Young, Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman, Find Him Where You Left Him Dead by Kristen Simmons, Spy Family Volume 8 by Tatsuya Endo, Royal Family by Jasmine Guillory, and A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. The two I hope to add to this are Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates and Ack of War, A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Mass. There might be another one too. I have started uh, 
fourth wing <laughs> by Rebecca Yaros, but I, that might be pushing it, reading all three of those before the end of the month. Who knows? And then, spoilers, but I have my 2023 book bracket here. I'm covering this up because I'm going to encourage you to go watch my book bracket video from yesterday. But I think that is the end of my journal. Uh, I think I just have a bunch of blank pages. This is kind of sad because I already set up my new reading journal. Again, I'll put a plug for that video up above. Eee, it's so beautiful, my new reading journal for 2024. But I do have so many empty pages. Who knows? Maybe I'll eventually use these pages for something. But full transparency, here's where I planned my reading journal for 2024 and my book goals. Uh, and that's about it. We also have a graveyard of books that I never read. The book covers <laughs> for the books I never read. Uh, but yeah, that is my reading journal for 2023. It has served me well. I love my reading journal. I love filling it out when I finish a book. And I think that is a testament to how good of a reading journal it is. Not anything about how good I am, but the fact that I made something for me that works and uh, I love using it. Thank you so much for watching this flip through everyone. Comment down below if you use a reading journal and what is your favorite part about your reading journal in particular. Like this video on your way out, consider subscribing to my channel if you would like to see more bookish and bullet journaling content from me and I will see you in the next one. Bye!